I want to welcome everybody back to the Tatooine virus briefing. As many of you know, the virus started on Tatooine. And we have seen infections among Jawas, sand people, and other species on Tatooine. We have closed the Mos Eisley spaceport to intergalactic as well as galactic travel. Except to bring people from the planet to recover on what we used to call the Death Star. Now we are calling it the Life Star because we're doing what we should be doing and can be doing to help the people of Tatooine and the galaxy to recover from the virus. So may the force be with you and the virus not. All right, everybody, welcome to Put Up, Shut Up, and Stand Up right here on govsradio.com, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Boxcast. And like our good friend Ken Pichelle likes to say, we on TV! TV. <laughs> I joined you on that one. <laughs> and yes, we are. I am here right now with my good buddy, Benny Rizzuti. Benny, how's it going, man? How you doing? I'm doing all right, Don. How are you doing? I'm doing how's it good. How's you? Everything's pretty good. I mean, this week's been a little bit, a little bit different with the with the quarantine. I feel like there's been some real movement, whether people agree with it or not. I mean, um, Georgia's now opening up back for business, and yeah, uh, theaters and uh, restaurants and stuff. Yeah, it feels a little premature because I, I think I'm kind of feel like like a beaten up, you know, abused stepchild or something, where I, I'm afraid to go out there, and I feel like. That uh, that Atlanta may be making a mistake, but who knows? They could be, you know, they're not going through it as hard as New York went through it. But what's your thoughts on it, Benny? My thoughts are why take chances? You know, it's spreading. This thing is spreading like crazy. We have no, we really don't have any idea how it's getting around because there are people that are carriers and they don't have the symptoms there's a lot going on i think they shouldn't take it for granted and i you know i think that uh also florida's opening up the beaches of all things i don't want to be near people right now right <laughs> you, i am i'm back to work and i'm i'm working on a a short schedule but i'm back to work and i'm not going if somebody comes uh within like five feet i back away <laughs> oh, and we're all like that because we, we have a tendency to get close to one another. Right, yeah. So I think that these other states, you know, and so, there are some people in the world around in this country who are thinking like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, you know, it's not, it is a big deal. So I, I think that uh, they're premature and I think you're going to find out that their uh, rate of getting the virus is going to raise up levels. They're well, that's going, the thing. I look at Atlanta right now as kind of like like the guinea pig of this whole thing, and we're going to kind of use them as a gauge, as an example. So if all of a sudden the numbers start to peak again over there and start going up, then we're like, all right, now we know Atlanta was way too soon. But if everyone, if it nothing happens and they, they just continue on uh, on the recovery path, which, you know, God bless them, then I think then we, we could all start to kind of evaluate off of that too. So it's kind of like still the unknown, but, it, you know, there's a state actually out there uh, taking a risk, risking all their, their civilians. And there are other states that want to do that. And I, uh, I think, really, I think they're all being very foolish. And I, I understand that uh, if you need the money and, you, you know, you, you need money for the, to survive, you know, that's, that's rough. So I understand. But if you're just, you don't want to be cooped up in your house, because you feel your rights are being taken away from you. This is not a time to think you'll get your rights back. You will. You know, we're Americans and we're people. You'll get your rights back because you'll complain to the point where they'll be like, oh, take your goddamn rights back. <laughs> Hi, kids. 
I'm Tim Saliani, local fucking irritated guy. I'm here to talk about the epidemic of stupidity that seems to be plaguing our country. Like this fucking idiot. We're here to stand up for our God-given rights under the Constitution of the United States of America. Did God write the Constitution? I must have missed that day in school. Let's be honest, sir. You look like the kind of unemployed mechanic currently scamming disability with supposed lower back problems. Nobody's infringing on your right, you fucking idiot. They're protecting others from your stupidity. Okay? And how about this gem? Healthy people aren't dying. We're just getting over it like the flu. Do you see this like the flu? I see it like the flu. That's exactly what it is. It's a different type of flu. So what are you saying to the scientists and those who encourage you to keep apart and wear a mask? Uh, they're fear mongers, because they don't know. I mean, people might say, look, they're the experts. But they're not, though, because their numbers have been lies. Oh, their numbers are wrong, sir? Are they? Are their numbers wrong? Because I got news for you. I doubt that you've paid attention to a fucking number since Tommy Two-Tone sung about Jenny's. Or how about this fucking woman? My biggest fear right now is how quick American patriots crumbled and hid in their homes because their government told them that they should. We can't hide in our homes and not produce for our families and for future generations because of a virus that may kill us. So what do I say to the science? I say I don't believe your science because I believe my God. Interesting you brought up your God because uh, you keep being a fucking idiot. You're going to meet him. I am sick to fucking death of you people. I, honest to God, am. I can't fucking believe we live in a time and era where the dumbest among us have the loudest voices, and I can't fucking stomach it. And if you're keeping tabs at home to see who the moral compass in the country is, uh, our elected officials, or hmm, the insane clown posse, well, the insane clown posse just canceled the gathering of the juggalos to maintain the health and well-being of their fans. Our elected officials, on the other hand, bunch of fucking morons. Hey, Benny and Don, it's good to uh, talk to you guys. Uh, I hope you're handling the pandemic and the quarantine well and keeping your sanity. I mean, I've pretty much lost my mind a long time ago. Uh, and, you know, trying to come to terms with things, you know, like um, now that I'm retired and uh, I'm working or I'm not working now because I'm considered non-essential, uh, which is funny because my wife has said I've been non-essential for about 20 years. Um, you know, like this morning, for example, she wasn't feeling well. And I said to her, you know, honey, sex is the best medicine. She said, you are absolutely right. Problem is, I need long lasting and you're fast acting. I mean, talk about inconsequential, right? So anyway, guys, I hope you have a, a, a great, uh, great time. I hope you're, you're staying well and I uh, hope to see you guys soon. All right, we are back, Benny. That yeah. brings us to our very first guest. Do you know who our first guest is today? Don, who's our first guest today? <laughs> our first guest is actress and sketch comic Amanda Bruton. She uh, has her character out there. Everyone's got to go see it on YouTube. Her character is Connie Big Balls Bumbaloni from New Jersey. <laughs> it's a great uh, thing that she does uh, on YouTube. Uh, I urge everyone to go see it. But uh, if, if you, if you, can't go right this second to see it on YouTube. You can watch one of her pieces right now. New Jersey's always been a hellscape. If we can survive here, we can survive COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever it is. It's a lot. Biblical stuff. There's earthquakes. We got a plague. I hear there's locusts in Africa. I'm kind of thinking to myself, you know what? We've had a good run. And of all the times that we can't go to church, we should be on our knees praying. Father Alphonse, I kind of question his hygiene anyway. There was no way in hell, sorry, that I was taking the Eucharist from his hand to my mouth. We all need to maybe just take a nice deep breath just as long as you're not standing too close to anybody else and i'm very happy to have our next guest on the show today uh she's an actress a writer a sketch comic with her alter ego is connie big balls bumbaloni that could be found on youtube and facebook and all over she is amanda bruton it's bruton right it's bruton you got it right bruton. Excellent. try well done yes i imagine <laughs> most people like bruton 
or something yeah, like people that. say like Bruton or they automatically become dyslexic and they say Burton like so many people have said Burton um people have asked me they're like oh are you related to Tim Burton and I'm usually in a place where like I'm like do you think if I was related to Tim Burton I'd be here you know like <laughs> so you're uh, you're in New York City right now right uh yeah I live in Queens so you're in like I'm on Long Island but I feel like you guys closer to the city or more in the hotbed. Obviously right now, yeah. uh, Long Island is the hotbed and New York is the hotbed. How are you dealing with the quarantine these days? I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm baking bread, which is shocking. And you, you don't know me, but honestly, like I can't even make <laughs> eggs. So the fact that I've decided to make bread is like people are like, what the hell is happening over there? And I mean, I shouldn't even say baking bread I don't, and I didn't even realize that this has become a joke. I thought I was being original and I'm like, oh, I'm going to make bread. And then I go onto social media and it turns out that like every basic white woman from age 25 <laughs> to 45 is fucking home. Like, do you, or do you care about cursing on your No, show? you can, you you can curse. Her. It's fine okay. to curse on here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, is baking bread and they have their sourdough starter and, and whatever. And the first loaf I made was ugly as shit and it tasted good. It was underbaked, but I'm, I'm going to try again. So that's what I've been focusing on, um, <laughs> but, which is just, it's just really rich. Cause I'm just, I'm not really one. I'm not really one that's uh, one to cook. Hello, my chefs and foodies. It's Connie Big Balls Bumbaloni, your favorite cook in the kitchen from North Jersey. You got the meat, you got the sauce, and I call it sauce. Yeah, I know some families like to call it gravy. I don't know where they're from. You're in the supermarket, a can of tomato sauce. It says sauce. Does it say tomato gravy? No, it does not. I rest my case. Thank you very much. Well, obviously, we're in a crazy time period where a lot of uh bad things are happening, but there is the positive to it and and such as baking bread and you know yes, just having the bread. time. <laughs> We're going back to colonial times <laughs> because <laughs> there was a moment where um, my uh, my wife and I were, I was like, I don't want to go to the laundromat because the last time I went to the laundromat, it was packed. There were people on top of each other. And I was just like, nope. I was like, we're doing all of our fucking hand washing in our sink. It's going to be colonial times, but with Netflix. That's what it's going to be. There um, you go. So, um, and we have a, uh, we have a seven month old baby. So it's nice to get her downstairs sometimes too. And so she, we're like, hey, these are what other human beings look like. Because right. right now you've got two moms and that's it. And I'm sure she's like bored to shit with us. So. <laughs> but I was going to say, like, well, for, for you being a comedian minded sketch artist, you, uh, you must have material every day from, from having the, the baby and, and raising totally. her in this environment. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say that. Um, well, one thing is, I think we're we're both we're pretty social people, um, my wife and I, and we were kind of saying that this quarantine, like once we had Frankie, then we were suddenly like you're just home way more often. You're not going out. People are coming to you, um, and we're ordering out a lot, like not cooking a lot, the whole thing. You were so you know you're so focused on the baby. So I was like, this isn't actually that different than what it was, you know, beforehand because we weren't really seeing our friends as much. Um, and in a way, I feel like there was a, you know, when you first, I don't know if you have kids, but, um, but like when you first have a, a baby, everybody wants to come over and see the baby. And so it felt like those first couple months, our social calendar was like, we were busier and seeing people more than we had ever seen people before. And I was like, I'm so, fr I appreciate it. I love it. It's so wonderful to be loved and for Frankie to be loved, but I'm so fucking sick and tired of seeing people and having yeah. to host. <laughs> And so now I'm like, oh shit, be careful what you wish for, because now no one can come over right. ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So, but uh, I am, um, I'm working on, I have a solo show that I did um, in the left, I did it a few times these last couple of years. I did it down at the Duplex, which is in the West Village. And I did it at this place called the Lori Beachman, which is in Midtown. Um, and it was, that show was definitely like cabaret storytelling, uh, you know, bits of stand up thrown in there. I want to say storytelling because it's not stand up, but, um, a lot, it was definitely comedy. Uh, and I did that show a couple of times and now I'm thinking about writing another show 
called Prego My Lesbo, <laughs> all about <laughs> like the choice to become a parent, going through the fertility process as a gay couple, an older couple at that. Because let me tell you something, the minute that you turn like 30, you're suddenly like a geriatric pregnancy. They're like, <laughs> oh, well, you're old, your eggs are shriveled up, what can we do, you know? Right. And so I had been thinking about writing a show about the whole experience even before all of this shit happened. So now I'm like, oh, damn, I need to get writing. <laughs> yeah, I think you got, it'd be, this would be great. Now, um, with the baby, so uh, did you have the baby? Which Who carried I it? I had the baby, yeah, I carried. Um, and that was, you know that's a choice, right? Because you, you got two ovens, basically, right? Is the, right. Way, is, the, is the way a gay man explained it to me one time. He's like, well, at least you have two ovens. We have no oven. Right. Um, and I was like, what? Oh, got it. Um, but uh, I was kind of like, yeah, no, I want to, I want to do it. I want to do, I want to have the whole, the whole experience and for good, for good or for bad. And it is, it is wild, like how, uh, how much your body changes and how you're not in, in, you know, you have no control over your emotions. Like there were days when I was pregnant, I would just be like <laughs> crying for no, and I'm not a big crier and I'm for no reason. And like, you know, you're crying, you're farting, like it's all happening at the same time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I was the one who, who ended up carrying. And um, if we were decide, if we did decide to have a second one, I think my wife, I'd be like, okay, your turn. But that's <laughs> that, unclear. Having two Maritza ovens, yeah. On that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Maritza, can I get a Coke? I don't give a shit about the aspartame, whatever. Dolores, do I look good? Do I need them out more? Can you see my muffin top? I think that could be aspirational. What's wrong with a muffin top? It's so weird because there's so much unknown right now. Like it really is the big thing is we just don't know when or how quickly we're going to come out of this um yeah it's definitely some crazy times and that's why you know i think in, in a way it, it's um people like characters like Kami big balls bumbaloni could could emerge and, and uh, i know she's right. been around for a while and, and yeah. but but now <laughs> it, i think this uh uh the character in the quarantine uh is, is really something special. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Some people are calling this the new normal. It's the wave of the future. I take issue with that, having to just FaceTime and do all of these zip, zap, zoom meetings. I don't think so. This is not normal. <laughs> Tell us all a little bit about uh, Connie Big Balls Bumbaloni. So she is um, inspired by my mom's side of the family. They are, they are the Italian Americans from Jersey, um, mainly around my Aunt B, um, my mom's sister. And um, she is just, you know, she's one of those people who's kind of like a legend in our community and our family, tells you like it is, tells you what to do, but with love. She's somebody who is very Catholic, but yet all of the homosexuals are going to her house to come out of the closet. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just like that constant, um, that constant uh, dichotomy of a character. And, um, and I always, you know, I think she's hilarious and brilliant. And so I was like, all right. And she's also like, when are you going to write a show about me? So I was like, okay. And so Connie kind of just came out of that. It was, um, I mean, it was years ago before I was really creating, I was just starting to create my own content. And it was a contest for like two minutes of creative content, of, of comedic content. So I was like, all right, you know, I had this idea for, you know, a broader character, a broader version of B, of my Aunt B. And Connie is also like just a broader version of me too. Like I'm not, I'm not the Jersey girl who wore, you know, the big long acrylic nails, but I always kind of wanted to be. <laughs> There are some upsides to this whole thing. My husband is sleeping in this spare room. I have barely even seen him in the last couple of weeks. He's such a crazy germaphobe. He either sends me a text message. Can I get a pan of lasagna for dinner tonight? So things really haven't changed. I work on it with my my friend and collaborator, James Michael. And what I think is what, what I think is really great is how he edits it. Um, just like those very quick jump cuts and um, He's just able to make things, he was able to sort of just met, get the tone and get the timing and he makes something that I think or hope is funny, funnier. 
Um, so our collaboration has really been key. And, um, and so it's the type of thing for until the quarantine where it was like every couple months, I'd be like, all right, let's do something about Christmas. Let's do something about the beach, you know, beach etiquette. And then with this, it was kind of like, God, this, it feels like Connie needs to talk about quarantine and being that we're all like stuck at home, like maybe we're checking in once a week and, and exper you know, we've always just sort of experimented with it. Is it going to be like a three minute video, an eight minute video? And so right now I feel like nobody has really, even though everyone's sitting home with nothing to do, they have no attention span. Right. So, <laughs> so trying to do these like shorter one to two minute videos, you know? Yeah. I, I think they're great. And, and I think like, you know, when watching them, you could definitely see it, your alter ego um, kind of flourishing, like, like you, you know, and, and that you're channeling somebody. It's still in it. Some people, they're getting a lot of stuff done. They're doing spring cleaning. They're Marie kondo their house. Why you got to be so freaking productive, right? Some people, they need to stay busy. And for other people, they need to sit on the couch and binge watch quality television. <laughs> when when writing sure. these, the, the writing is really crafty, man. I, I, I really like the jokes and, and uh, kind of the tone of, of Connie, like with the, which talks about the priest and she doesn't think he's clean. There's no way I'm taking the Eucharist. <laughs> those kind of lines are like gold. How do you, like, <laughs> right, you right. those off the top of your head? Are you really channeling or has that, I mean, that's incredible. So it's always been a mix of where I write everything down. Um, and then what ends up in the final, but then when we're shooting it, I also improvise a lot. And so I would say what, un, what, what, what we get in the final cut is probably a mix of both, where I've had the ideas and I have some jokes sort of crafted out and then I'll just kind of go, 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 go. And sometimes the best stuff is the shit that just comes flying out of my mouth right. out of nowhere. Right. Um, <laughs> and then other times we're like, wait, where did you, what, where did you go? That was weird. And so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's usually a mix of improv and some, you know, sketch stuff that has been written down. Haven't you noticed over the last several years that people just don't talk to each other anymore? <laughs> That's why we need, no, we need comedy. We need comedy, yeah. big balls, bumbaloni. We need to laugh. We need to find the positives in all this, whether it's baking bread, raising exactly. our children, being together. We got to find the blessings in this thing. And um, I think there's a lot of, of good that can come out of it, but there's also, you know, we know the, a lot of scariness too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that, and for me, it's really been, you know, I talk about how Connie doing her vlogging is cathartic, but like, it's been cathartic for me, Amanda, <laughs> talking <laughs> in the third person, I think is a sign of insanity. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, but when I decided to do it, I was like, you know, it's been, it's been fun for me to be, you know, writing and filming the stuff and all of that and sharing it. And when I, when I've been seeing people say, you know, I needed to laugh today. So thank you for that. Like that's, that is, that's everything. And my job is done, you know, cause I think we do need to, there needs to be some levity during times like this. Um, well being respectful, but also, yeah, we need to, re we need to be reminded to laugh because you scroll on social media and so much of it is like negative and doom and gloom. And I understand that that's the world we're living in right now, but, um, but you got to laugh. You have when to you laugh. Can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time, Amanda, to talk to me today uh, and, and go over all these things. Um, where can people find you and and find Connie and all that good stuff? Yeah, we um, Connie just launched her own YouTube channel, Confessions by Connie. Um, so you can find us there. We're in the we're in the midst of. There's about. God, probably 10 or 11 episodes that we did that was that were all of those episodes have been living on my personal YouTube channel. So we're in the process of moving everything over, but all of the new stuff, particularly Connie in quarantine, is living on the new YouTube channel. So that's Confessions by Connie on YouTube. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Confessions by Connie, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Everyone check her out. Uh, Amanda thank Bruton. You. And um, like Crew Tom, but with a B. You got it. You'll never forget it. <laughs> and uh, Connie Big Balls Bumbaloni will, will not let you down. Trust me, folks. Well, thanks again, Amanda. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Don. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> the thing that they call Facebook Live, it is the most mundane, stupid freaking thing. Everybody thinks their life is so exciting and they have something super exciting to say. You don't. Nobody freaking cares. My name is Silvio Dante. My friend Don Sil. 
It's got a great show. What, what's the call? Put up, stand up, and shut up. No, put up, shut up, and stand up. I keep getting that wrong. Put up, shut What is it again? Put up, shut up, and stand up. I don't know the name of it, <laughs> but everybody else does. Put up, shut up, or stand up. Right? Put up, shut up, stand up. Put up, shut. Put up, stand up, and shut right, up. We'll start over. No, that's right that's again. Put up, stand up, shut up. Uh, put up, shut up, and stand up. You gotta watch. Put up, shut up, and stand up with Don Sills. We just had a fucking blast. That's what I thought. Put up, shut up, stand up. That's what I was going to say. It's just crazy times. What, what do you... I do want to ask you, Benny, what do you think about the protesters out there protesting to, to, to get out of their houses, get back to work, but also they're protesting without masks and um, they're holding up signs that say stuff like, you know, um, you know, kind of sacrifice the weak, uh, stuff like that. All right. I, th uh, I think that it's very dangerous. Once again, I think what they're doing is dangerous because we don't know enough about this virus. And we've seen that it's devastated other countries, right? It started in China and still people think that China's getting over. They're not getting over it. There's so much we don't understand. And uh, now I'm, I'm reading about how it affects people differently. And now a thing is it's causing blood clots. I had read this and that's uh, my cousin's uh, fiance passed away. A blood clot went into his heart. Jesus. This is causing blood clots in your bloodstream. So you don't so I think these people are being very foolish. I think you should you don't want to stay home, but I don't feel like I'm being held captive. I don't feel like if you were in a police state or being held captive, if you voiced against the government, they wouldn't find you anymore. I know people who lived in police states. And a friend of mine told me that he said uh he said if somebody badmouthed the government and they were your next door neighbor, you wake up in the morning and they don't live there and you ask what happened to them and they say they never lived and you can't question that. Wow. They're going to disappear. Yeah, there it's are, not like, yeah, this this, this, it, it's Here, not people, like we're in the movie Footloose. Remember <laughs> Footloose, <laughs> you can't dance? Are you kidding me? Dancing is against the law. Yeah, man, look, we got laws of the poop shoot around here. know what time it is right what time is it Don? <laughs> it is time for professor fedora's top five professor fedora my favorite little nazi boy <laughs> here it is once i got to get ready to make Don Sills top five for this week oh boy i gotta get ready oh <laughs> Once I will give Don Sill his top five. <laughs> well, here you go, Don Sill. With your top five things that I despise. <laughs> Number five. People getting along. Once I can't take it anymore. Number four. Getting caught by my neighbor. Take it as TP because I need it. On well, number three, having to watch yet another new show that's going to be staring on guns. Since I think I did called No Ride, No The hell with it, I don't want to watch it. Boo! No, how long are we going to be on for? Oh, we're going to try to stay on for about 55 minutes. All right. People wearing these masks in the car, looking like idiots all the time. <laughs> That's not me making that noise, it's the mask! What's number one? Always watching that happy Don Sill, laughing all the time! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> 
I'm the one who's laughing now. Wow. Give it up for Evil Fedora and his top five things that he despises. It was pretty, pretty uh, intense. I loved it. And now uh, here's some jokes. A cowboy riding his horse through the desert comes up to a small town, rides into the town, comes up in front of a little saloon, gets off the horse, ties up the horse, walks behind the horse, lifts up its tail and kisses him right in the rear end. He walks into the saloon and the barkeeper says, hey, did I just see you kiss your horse's ass? The cowboy says, yep, I got chap lips. And the bartender says, that helps chap lips. And the cowboy says, keeps you from licking them. Uh, well, comedians, at least all of our shows have been canceled because of a virus and not because we pissed off a woke person. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Oh, man. That's the kind of girl I want to introduce to my parents. <laughs> hey. Too, too bad. Too bad someone else put them in their grave. Already. Oh, snap. Ooh, sorry. I'm hey, kidding. Um, okay. Benny, uh, when's the last time you watched some uh, some pornography? Uh, what time is it? <laughs> well, Charles Goonan, that's all he's been doing throughout his quarantine. Really? And, yeah. And uh, we, I actually got a chance to catch up with Goonan in between sessions. And, uh, <laughs> and Jimmy, what, what was he, switching hands? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here he is now. We are on Zoom. We're Zoom. <laughs> this is uh, Kermit's feet. Those are Kermit's feet. Oh, very nice. Yes. <laughs> so, getting a little look into the world of uh, the great Conan right now. Oh yeah. How is how is things? How is uh, quarantine been for you, my friend? It's all right as long as I have the internet. There's so much. Uh, uh, I don't know what do you call it, pornography, that uh, <laughs> you know. The only thing that really suffers is my carpet. Because <laughs> I have horrible aim. I yeah, horrible and, aim. <laughs> and there's not enough toilet paper to clean everything up these days. And the toilet I think I originally started the toilet paper shortage before this happened because there's so much <laughs> there's so much internet pornography. My favorite pornography, if I could if I could be, you know, family oriented right now, yeah, my sure. favorite pornography that there is is this new kind called shoplifting pornography uh what are you doing up you should sit down <laughs> it's my favorite kind because, have you heard of it oh yeah i'm guilty as charged yeah okay so it's like you know first of all it's always in one shop so this one shop always gets shoplifted <laughs> It's by like the a... hottest chicks <laughs> and, and they're always shot they always get caught they're horrible criminals and <laughs> the security guards are the most corrupt security guards take the bra off no i'm not gonna take my bra off they're always like look i could go to the cops or you could suck it <laughs> this is the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life this show and there's so, always in that weird storeroom, like back room, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now, when I, when I ever I see like you know, uh, uh, footage of any type of storeroom or back office, <laughs> I get it right. <laughs> Just as like a Pavlov's dog type of situation. I never wanted to be mall security so bad in my life. Oh my God! I, I, I gotta watch that uh, Paul Bart Mall Cop. It must be a dirty <laughs> movie. I never saw it, but it must be a dirty movie. It is. You gotta check it out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so the the uh, you got the porn, so that's helping you get through it. Absolutely. Uh, but but what's like what's a normal day like for uh, for, for the great Goonin? Well, I told you mostly already. <laughs> But uh, other than that, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, getting up, uh, having some coffee. Um, if you'll pardon, if I could evoke a little French, shitting, uh, shitting. And then, you know, sort of like looking for things to watch, looking for things to do uh, in the uh, while confined, you know, in, in your little abode here. You know, and trying you know, to. You definitely don't like to go out. You're really playing it safe. You, you went out like once in the month to go food shopping the other day. What was it, your excursion like? 
So I'm outside for the first time, dressed up like the Ayatollah, or some sort of terrorist. I notice there's some people who don't cover up at all. This is my first trip this month. I'm going to the convenience store to get some extra food to last me for the weekend. It's very scary. We'll see how it goes. Yes, I, I went outside. I was wrapped up in my scarf. I looked like Yasser Arafat. Um, I, there was a couple <laughs> of Israeli people, and they looked at me funny. Um, and now I will never get legal representation in Brooklyn again. But um, it was, you know, it's kind of spooky. It's like a ghost town. I live right around the corner from Flatbush Avenue, but it, there's like nothing, nothing going on there. It's, it's you got to wait outside before you're allowed into the supermarket. And you grab your things and you go. Uh, you know, it's you, you get through it. You try to get through it, and then you come back home and you go, "Oh, I have ever, I have a disease. I got to wash my hands and stuff like that." You know, so. Uh, you know, crazy times, like crazy, that. scary time. Yeah. <laughs> That's why but whenever I finally get home, I let out. I watch as much pornography as I can, because who knows if we'll ever have chance to watch pornography ever again. So I make sure I watch as much as possible. And uh, I even wanted to recommend some some things you could watch while you're uh, quarantined. OK, great. We want, we want to know. This will be <laughs> I'm playing the theme music now. For the great Goonins movie recommendations. Oh wait, how should we how should we phrase it? The the, uh, the great Goonins quarantine recommendations. Sure, whatever you want to say. <laughs> You're going to be very disappointed. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Whatever right. way you want to. Say. But uh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you like now. I like the classics. So like when you're looking up things, I found that there was a good movie called uh, Debbie Does Dallas. Lisa, where are you? Oh, Lisa, where are you? Oh, Lisa, where are you? Oh, Lisa, where are you? Excellent film, first of all. Great plot. Uh, and, uh, you know, it has the, the full bush, which is what we want. And I'm not talking about Republican presidents. I'm talking about, you know, <laughs> uh, vaginal hair, labia beards, as they say. And I like that. And there's also Behind the Green Door, which is another another uh, classic pornography. You can classic watch. one. Watch him till the morning comes, creeping. Oh, green door. What's that secret you're? And that's, you know, that has great cinematography. It's a little artsy fartsy, but it has great cinematography. The only thing is, if you remember uh, Siskel and Ebert, what Gene Siskel once said to Roger Ebert when they were reviewing The Muppets Take Manhattan, um, you can't whack off to the cinematography. So, <laughs> and that's Gene Siskel. That's not me. That's Gene Siskel. I don't well, want to take credit for that. That's Gene Siskel. But in this case, you can whack off to the cinematography. <laughs> Well, you can whack off to whatever you want to whack off to, to tell you the truth. Uh, my, my, another, another great thing to watch if you, uh, is, uh, is an, another scenario, if we will, is when the mother wants to teach the daughter. And the, the stepfather just happens to be showing up. And I love how accommodating the stepfather always is. Yeah, yeah, I'll help you out. What, do you want to suck on it? Sure, sure. Figure it out. Why don't you both do it? Why don't you both do it? <laughs> you got a, you got a teacher. How will she learn? And learning can be fun and messy. <laughs> That's homeschooling at its finest. It's some okay. homeschool. That's the type of homeschooling gives you a rash. That's the type of homeschooling I like. <laughs> Catch me outside. How about that? And uh, what other great one, uh, movies are there? <laughs> and everything by Bob Hope. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Which you went there. back. Yeah, yeah, you went back to the '70s, and then you, and then the last one. It seems like a more of a modern one. Well, it, it, it seems like a lot more incest in the modern day. Of pornography. There's a lot more. Listen, pornography is is a lot dirtier now, and it's a lot. Spe it's a lot more specific. Like you could look up anything. Like I didn't know there was uh, shoplifting porn. Who ever thought? <laughs> With looks and body, you have a great body. Um, thank you. 
And now the whole idea of shoplifting is very arousing to me, and it never was. <laughs> like now, I want to, I want to, I want to steal a Snicker. Oh, oh, I just came. No, no, no. <laughs> there goes the carpet. <laughs> there goes the carpet. <laughs> Kermit! This is uh, Kermit the Frog returning you to your regularly scheduled program. Boy, these nursery rhymes get weirder all the time. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that goes to the But I like, I like movies that tell you exactly what it's about. So, Anal Slut Takes It Twice. That's exactly what that movie's about. <laughs> she took it twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she was an anal slut. <laughs> if, if I may say so myself. <laughs> Yeah, you saw it first hand, and that's what she gets for shoplifting. First hand, second hand. I could use both. I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and she deserves it. If she wants to shoplift, that's what happens. She deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> she deserves it. Serves you right. That's what happens when you shoplift. That's on you. That's candy. all on you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but... <laughs> Clean and family oriented. I'm really a family entertainer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. People, That's why I always tell people. people. They, they, they ask me if I'm religious, and I'm not religious, but a lot of times in the dock with just me and the internet, I say, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Because <laughs> oh oh <laughs> I'm religious. This house is clean. You know how many people now watching this are going to go? on the phones to Pornhub and look up um, shoplifting porn because of you. Yeah. You just, you just up the ratings. See? On, on all those naughty Can I girls. Say something? It, has, it has a funny connection because the shoplifter porn is now, they're, the, the ones we're talking about are American. But before they ever were American, it actually was Asian. You would only find shoplifter porn Asian. Really? Which is, it's so difficult to pay attention and read the subtitles, you know? Because apparently ooh is not ooh in Chinese because ooh is somebody's name in Chinese. So it's not the same. <laughs> it's, it's very confusing. It's somebody's name. Uh, you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to rub that egg roll the wrong way. See, this is all very mean, what I'm saying. This is not nice. By the way, doesn't Wuhan sound like jerking off? Wuhan, 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 Wuhan. Anyway. Uh, well, Gunan, I, I always appreciate it. I appreciate you getting Skype just so we could do this interview. Oh, yeah. People have no idea. This took about three hours. Just to... <laughs> We were going to do this by Etch-A-Sketch if we didn't work out. <laughs> but persistence pays off. We got yes. this recorded. It's going to be on the show this Saturday. I appreciate everything you do, Great Goonin. And uh, where can people find you in your videos and your show? Give some plugs. You can find me on... Um... Uh, by the way, with all this wearing masks and stuff like that, I, I don't think we should have to wear masks without capes and insignias on our chest. I, or, I already have <laughs> my superhero name. I have a great superhero name. Oh, really? What's your superhero name? Super Goonan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's also, that's that's also my... That's also my YouTube uh, account. You can look me up at Super Goonan or Charles Goonan. Look up Tune Into Goonan, my show, G-O-O-N-A-N. -N. You can find me also on Facebook, and you can find my videos there. And if I could be very serious in these troubled times, remember everybody out there, speak your love to those who seek your love. There you go. Hey, I could be profound, too. The, the words from uh, the great Goonan, everyone. I appreciate all you do, my friend. Thank you very much for uh, making this happen. Are you wearing? Are you wearing the name of your show on your shirt? I am, but yes, I am wearing one of my shirts. I gotta get you one, man. You've been on the yeah. show enough times. You deserve one, right? I should get yeah. one of those. I should get something. I should get that. A ride home. Well, I gotta. I'm home. <laughs> but finally, I'm home. <laughs> how difficult. People don't realize how difficult. Every time I came to the show, it was always a big rigmarole of me getting there and getting back. But uh, I appreciate you, brother. Hold on, let me stop. Uh, Recording.
There's this ventriloquist, and he's relatively new in the business, and he's playing in this big club, and the, with the dummy on his knee, the dummy starts telling blonde jokes, and he's telling all these different blonde jokes, and the audience is hysterical. They're laughing like crazy. They're cracking up. And out of nowhere, in a back table, a woman who happens to be a blonde stands up and she starts shouting at him and screaming at him and saying, how dare you uh, attack women because of the color of their hair? How dare you say that because a woman's a blonde, she doesn't have intelligence and she has no idea what's going on and she can't be successful in this world. What you're doing isn't only an insult to blonde women, it's an insult to women everywhere. So the ventriloquist gets shaken up a little bit and he starts to apologize to the woman and she says, you keep out of this, mister. I'm talking to the little idiot sitting on your knee. All right, there's something else now I want to talk to you about. And it, they're saying now you could also spread this virus and my family gets mad at me when I mention it. Farting. Some scientists in Australia have d discovered that uh, if you fart, but now it's if you're bare ass naked. So the way I look at it, if you're in a nudist colony and you get any kind of disease, you had it coming, all right? Especially now. That puts a whole new term to silent and deadly. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Silent but deadly. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. Yeah, for real. I mean, so you, so in theory, if you farted and it gets out there, uh, in in the, and you inhale it, you smell someone's fart. You could possibly get it's a COVID death nineteen now. Yeah, you know, so, when you used to say, "Whoa, who died?" Right? It smells like somebody <laughs> died. Now it's like you smell it, you died. Yeah! Wow! Man, that's good. <laughs> dude, dude, that's bad. Oh, good. Dude, the fucking which way? Right or left? Let's go. So if you smell a fart, you could all almost be scared. Like, oh my god, I guess inhaled that fart. I might <laughs> get COVID if that guy's sick. <laughs> And, and I'm thinking of how absurd, okay, if I pass wind, I could be transmitting or somebody could, then how come I don't get a cold if somebody has a cold and they fart? How come they, you know, they're saying right, right, yeah. it could be in the feces now, the virus is in the, isn't any virus in your feces? I think so, so if yeah. I have flu, if I have the flu and I fart near somebody, they're going to get the flu? <laughs> you know? We're going to have to start putting, um, Filters on our underwear now. Hi, kids. I'm Tim Saliani, local fucking irritated guy. I'm here to talk about the epidemic of stupidity that seems to be plaguing our country. Take Carolyn Goodman, for example. Yes, this gem isn't just the answer to the question, what if a cup of Sanka and a pack of Virginia Slims had a fuck child? No, she's also the mayor of Las Vegas, who wants so badly to open up the casinos again that she offered up her own citizens as a control group to see how bad it could get if the country just reopened. That's fucking great. Hey, listen, Napoleon Dynamite's grandma, I live in New York. We don't need your fucking control group to see how bad it can get. You want to drag those two aging German Joe Exotics, Siegfried and Roy, out of retirement and open up shop? I got news for you, lady. Even the fucking tigers are getting coronavirus. Look. I get it. We're in uncertain times. And uncertainty brings fear. And fear brings conspiracy and stupidity. But if you want to survive this, then I suggest you get the fuck off social media, okay? And put on your big boy and girl pants and act like the fucking adults you're supposed to be. Do you think it takes courage to go out and complain you've had to sit on your ass for a month? Do you think it makes you a fucking patriot, do you? That's not courage. Courage isn't going out and complaining or crying in public that you can't clog your arteries at Chili's tonight and it hurts your feelings, okay? Those aren't your fucking rights being taken away, you idiot. You want to know what courage looks like? Courage looks like this, okay? This is a patriot. That's what a patriot looks like because when you're gasping for breath in a hospital because you were an entitled, misguided mope who decided to listen to a dude whose parents named him Tucker... 
and what he has to say instead of public health officials? That beautiful person right there is going to put her life and her family's life on the line to make sure that you survive. So if you want to keep being a fucking idiot, I'll make a suggestion to you people. We'll give you one of the Dakotas. We're not using both of them. We can't possibly need two Dakotas. You can fucking decide which one you want. We'll give it to you. You guys can go and infect the fuck out of each other till your fucking lungs are full. Until you're clutching your chest and falling face first screaming freedom. You can fucking have one and you people have to shut the fuck up and leave us the fuck alone i say we give it a shot let's test darwin's theory okay because i can't possibly believe that you the baby turtle made it to the ocean there's no fucking way you got this fucking far in life being this stupid okay so take my offer you want to be stupid grab one of the dakotas go fuck yourselves blind there all right Godspeed, stupid. All right, Benny, and now it's time for our next guest. This is a, a very good guest. You know who it is, Benny? No, Don. Who is it? <laughs> this is uh, Dave Koenig. Uh, he is a um, an actor, a stand-up comedian, a talk show host. He, he does it all. He's a great guy. He's been around for a really long time. I, I first saw him years ago on the Metro Channel. Uh, he hosted a thing called the Subway Q and A, and uh, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been friends with him ever since, and and uh, so now he's doing a, a Facebook Live every single day at six o'clock. It's like him and his wife Susan. They do their their own kind of talk show. Um, it's it's very Carson esque in his delivery. I really get a kick out of it, and we got to catch up with Dave, and um, and here he is right here. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are here with our next guest. This is an, a stand-up comedian, talk show host, actor. He, he does it all. This is Dave Koenig. Dave, oh how are you, man? Gosh. What an accomplished individual I am. <laughs> wow, I'm so multi-gifted and talented. How are you, pal? I'm doing great. It's great talking to you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm real happy that you're here joining us today. You've been doing this for a long time. You've been... Um, I remember it must have been about 20 years ago uh, when I first started seeing you on the Metro Channel. Uh, the the Subway, Metro Channel, holy smoke. Yeah, the Subway Q&As, those were awesome. And uh, I loved all of those, those are great. Remember the old days when the announcers would come on the trains and say things like this? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, that was a big hit show. The Metro Channel is a big hit uh, network and this. Uh, Subway Q&A was a big hit show. I would have gotten more exposure if I had appeared on an elevator surveillance camera video. <laughs> but you did some cool stuff. Like, I was just looking, like, so yesterday was the the anniversary of the Ramones releasing their very first album. And, yeah. then, yeah. and then I see you when I'm uh, interviewing the Ramones on the subway <laughs> back in those days. I was the... Uh, People don't know this about me. I was the fifth Ramon. Did you know that? Now, you might not remember this, but I was one of the original Ramones. I was the fifth Ramon. Joey, Dee Dee, Johnny, Dee Dee, Marky, Johnny, and Joey, Dave Koenig Ramon. And Dave. Can you give me a little quick yes, lesson yes, here on uh, playing the drums? You gotta go, uh, you know. Look at this. I look so pink. Why do I look so pink? The lighting in here is terrible. I thought you the were doing that ultraviolet. Are you doing that light stuff to try to get rid of the coronavirus? <laughs> I don't even know where, Don, I don't even know where to look. I don't even know where the camera is. I'm not, I was not cut out for this whole Zoom lifestyle. I need a TV <laughs> studio with a crew and craft services and snacks and coffee and interns. That's what I need. I did this whole, this whole pandemic world of entertainment. It just leaves me cold. I don't, I, I look, look at it. I look terrible. Look at I look how red I look in the face. What's wrong with me? Don, what's wrong with me? You look great. You're sitting there in your in your hacienda. Somewhere in your secret hacienda in Long Island. You look beautiful. You got the right lighting. I look like an escaped lunatic with a skin condition. It's awful. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Uh, I think you I think you look handsome as ever, Dave. Uh, go on with you, you crazy lug. <laughs> now you uh, have been kind of dealing with the quarantine in a, in a very positive way. I think it, it kind of it spawned something uh, creative from you. Tell us a little bit about what you well, got going is, on. 
This is my wife's fault, frankly, because when the whole when the whole damn thing started. By, by the way, can I say goddamn on your show? Can I? I, I sure. much prefer to say goddamn than damn. Goddamn, yeah. so much more. It's just, that's such a great word, goddamn. That's, that's a little that, bit it extra. It feels good to say. That. Yeah, a little extra punch. <laughs> oh yeah, with anything, you could be having lunch. So, you know, pass the goddamn ketchup, and it just it just gets everybody's attention. <laughs> you know, you mean it. You really want the but, ketchup. That's right. That's that's when you know you really want the ketchup. <laughs> but no, my wife. When the whole goddamn thing started, my wife uh, said to me, "She said, I said, I said, what are we gonna do? We're gonna be locked in the house. I can't go out. I can't do any show. I had some shows lined up. They all, you know, like I'm sure everyone." Every stand-up comic in America, you know, we all had our shows canceled. Uh, I was on a little bit of a roll with some TV parts. So, you know, nobody's doing TV. And I, so everything, I was, I'm stuck in the house with my wife and my, my teenage son, which, by the way, every 14-year-old boy's dream in life, to be stuck in, in an apartment with his parents <laughs> night and day for six weeks. Uh, must be, he must be having a blast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're going to end up on the front page of the Post any day now. <laughs> Massive murder suicide in the Bronx. But listen, let me tell you something. Don. So, so she, uh, she says to me, uh, uh, do a show, do a show on Facebook every day. It'll keep you focused. You know, it'll keep you, uh, uh, you know, from getting all down and out. So uh, we started doing a show uh, every weekday on my Facebook page. I thought this thing would last a couple of weeks. You know, <laughs> six weeks. I'm still doing the show. I ran out of material about four weeks ago. <laughs> I saw this guy on TV talking about this the other day. You want to get your insides all disinfected. So you get some, get yourself some of this nice, uh, uh, yeah, you get the, I saw the guy on TV talking about this. And what, you, here, what you want to do is you just pour that, you pour that right in there. You put it right in the smoothie. And there you go. You get some of that, you just get some of that going right in there. Yeah, a little, there you go. Hey, you know, you want to get, 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 oh, goodness, you want to give me a napkin. <laughs> I mean, I'm pulling out, you should see, I'm pulling out stuff I wrote 30 years ago that wasn't even good then. <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know, your, your show, you do it every single day at six o'clock, okay. weekdays only, right? Or is it the weekend? Is there no, no, we take the weekend off because okay. I, I get exhausted. I need yeah. 48 hours to recharge my battery. <laughs> right. So you're doing it every day at 6 p.m. People could catch it on your Facebook Live, Dave Koning on Facebook. Um, yeah. I started watching them and, and you, you get roped in you're you you're very good at, at uh, the monologuing and, and dialogue you got kind of an old school uh johnny carson flavor to you a little johnny meets david letterman flavor to you well i'll tell you what really helps is when so my wife insisted i do this show i said all right i'll do it i'm gonna can you have to be my uh my uh studio audience you know right. <laughs> i'm not going out there all by myself and uh, so i forced my wife to sit with she, she doesn't want to come on camera she sits off camera but I, and she, ha her job is, uh, unfortunately, she has to laugh at all my jokes. And <laughs> she's heard all these jokes before, you know. She's heard all my material before. So she's, she's the most brilliant actress in America because she's laughing at stuff she's heard a hundred times and she, uh, that she didn't even particularly like, you know, right. the first time. <laughs> so that helps a lot, you know. I you think know, it's but, great. I, I, I love the, how you, you, you know, that she is kind of your audience and that she does give back and that she has her own catchphrase too, which is pretty she's awesome. She's got her own catchphrase with her own line of uh, products with her catchphrase. Hi. Susan Koenig, <laughs> hi everybody products. I know Susan is very proud to announce a, uh, a new uh, product uh, on the, the line. Uh, the official Susan Koenig, hi everybody toast. There you go. It's the toast. It's the toast with a picture of Susan on it. Oh. Oh my God. I need that. Uh, no, oh. biting on that. You can yes. go to her website. You can buy Susan Koenig. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, with a little picture of Susan. It says, hi, everybody. And she's got ointments and, you know, and it's all overpriced. I mean, she's a, she's a goniff. She's a total criminal, this woman. She's charging like $800 for, for a coffee cup with her face on it. I said, honey, that's ridiculous. It's so overpriced. She said, yeah, but if I could just sell one. Yeah, there you, there you go. You got to strike the iron while it's hot, you know? But, you know, the thing about doing a show with your wife is, uh, uh, <laughs> so we do the show at six o'clock and, you know, we've been, we've been locked in this apartment now for six weeks together, every waking moment and day. <laughs> there are days where it's, it's a guess if we're actually going to do the show or kill each other, you know? <laughs> so we could be like, ah, ah, and then it's like, honey, are you going to do the show with me at six o'clock? Oh, okay. <laughs> so how does that work? Is it like, uh, almost like, um, you know, your, your day 
is okay. I got to write the show, write the monologue. Is, so it's keeping you busy throughout the course of the day. Oh yeah, yeah, it keeps me busy and and plowing through the material and you know go you know because I have a, I have a you know I did a couple of solo shows off Broadway, so I pulled those out off the shelf. My stand up act off the shelf, not just the A material, the B and the C material. <laughs> Sometimes we're getting to the D material, you know. But we're getting it all out there because I, I promised I would do a show every day. It's only 15 minutes, you know, it's 15 or 20 minutes. And I tell show business anecdotes and, you know, you know, I kill time. I, I kill time. And I invite you all to come kill time with me if you like. <laughs> because what, that, what the hell else are we going to do? <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the, hey, wait a minute, H honey, honey, please. I, 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 how many times have I told you not to put my Emmy Award directly in front of the camera? I know you're proud of me for winning three local New York Emmy Awards for a show no one remembers on a, on a basic cable network that went out of business, but please. I remember. I'm trying to, here, put this with the other two. All right. Thank you very much. we have been, uh, like, you know, doing this for, for a long time, and, and you've done a little bit of everything. You've, you've hosted your own TV shows before. Uh, you did the uh, Subway Q&A. Um, so, like, w with something like this, so the Facebook Dave Koning show. Oh, it's a tremendous come down. Are you kidding me? It's a tremendous come down for me. I used to be on actual TV studio sets with people and cameras. I don't even know how to press. I didn't even know how to get on your show today. My wife had to show me how to get on Zoom today. I don't even know where to look right now. I don't need this aggravation, Don. <laughs> You've been doing great. So I guess that I got the answer from, I was going to ask you, would you continue doing the, the Facebook Absolutely Live? This? When we get back to normal life. Yeah. Absolutely not. No way. No, no. I want to go back to real show business. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I want real show business where they actually occasionally pay you money. <laughs> You're not making any money doing this, Don, are you? No, I'm not. I wish I would. It would be nice. Yeah, it's like us. We should be paid for our work. Yes. I'll tell you what, I'm going to send you a check for $12 because I want you to make something off of this show today. <laughs> uh, you're awesome, man. I, I, I love you. I, I'm hoping that, that um, when we're all done with this, that big yes. things happen for you, that you can come on our show to Governors in, in, uh, in, in Levittown. Yeah, Levittown, Long Island. It would be great to have you on live. I, anytime you want. Anytime you want. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, get time for a quick story? Yeah, of course. Uh, um, okay, about, this is, I'll, I'll give you the short version of a quick story. So 10 years ago, I'm, I'm a Jew, right? And uh, I'm, you know, and, and I, I conned my way into hosting a radio show on the Catholic radio channel, okay? That's pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that takes time. So for a while, I, I was working for the Catholic church, which was very stressful. It was a stressful situation. And I get booked to do, I, I, to do um, uh, uh, Governors. I'm coming out to Governors to do a show with uh, um, uh, John Mulroney. John oh, Mulroney nice. was, and, and I'm coming out there, and I had like, like, uh, um, like psychosomatic stress from working for the Catholic Church. I had these back pains, and these spasms. So I make it out there, but I can't get off the subway platform. I'm like on the platform. I'm lying down on the platform. Oh, wow. Like my back is all spasmed up. So I got a great history with governors. They love me out there. <laughs> well, hopefully this time when you come down, no back spasms. You no get out there. Spasm. We'll rock it. We'll have a great time. And have you on the show. Anytime. It'll be, it'll be awesome. You're the it's best. A, the, the first thing I want to do when the pandemic is over is come, come out there and hang out with you. That was, that's, yeah, the first thing. that's the first. Excellent. That was my first choice, too, is that hang out. We hang out together. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But uh, it, let's hope we get through this. Uh, and in, in the meantime, I want everyone to kind of check your show out every day, every weekday at six o'clock, Dave Coney. Why Before, not? Yeah, it's what awesome. What the hell else you got to do? You can't go fun. anywhere. You can't <laughs> do anything. You're getting on your family's nerves. They can't stand you anymore. They started out liking you. Now, after six weeks, they can't stand you. So join me on my show and join Don on his show. What else are you going to do? You watch shows on Zoom. This is they, the new thing we all do. <laughs> there you go. The big Zoom stars. <laughs> Dave Koning, everybody. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, Don. God bless. God bless, my friend. The show that's been on my mind all the time. Poo, su, 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 su. Ooh, ooh. 
Now you might not even know my name, but we both love that wheel spinning game. Poo soo 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 soo. Ooh ooh. Ooh, Saturday evenings. Poo soo there. We all come running from everywhere to Gov's Comedy Club Radio. It feels so good when you just say the word. Ooh, poo soo 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 soo. Have you burped into your face mask yet? And smelled it? Kind of smells like the dumpster behind the Dunkin' Donuts on a hot August day. The commercials on TV for restaurants keeping like, oh, no contact delivery, no contact delivery. But you know, I long for the days of full contact delivery. Remember when you had to wrestle your delivery guy for your dinner? Those were the good old days. Well, that's the show, Benny. That is the show for today. Great show, Don. Great show as always. A lot of fun stuff, um, you know, and I appreciate, again, all the comedians who contribute. Uh, it's always fun stuff. And, uh, you know, keep them coming. Keep them coming because we don't know how much longer we're going to be quarantined. <laughs> oh, well, you and I already said we might not. We're not going anywhere till at least the summer. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is it. This is how we're doing this thing. <laughs> for the next couple of months and then we'll it's get back to the game show. With the, yeah <laughs> you know this way i can't blame anyone if i get sick i can't blame i can, can blame my own flatulence <laughs> I have nobody remember, but my own flatulence to blame <laughs> remember everybody if you have to fart now <laughs> hold it in or go into the bathroom and just let one out do what they call a moon blaster do you know what a moon blaster is benny yeah, it's where you blow your moon across the room. <laughs> you moon somebody and you give them a bare ass fart. Oh man, no, no. <laughs> That's a moon blaster. I'm gonna light their farts. Yeah. They're gonna light their ass right on fire with a cigarette lighter. <laughs> well, Betty, thanks again as always, my friend. It's always a oh, pleasure you, talking with you. Same here, buddy. Same here. Talk and to I, you. Uh, talk to you at the same time. Next week. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Again, Thank you for share watching, the everyone. show. Share the show as much as you possibly can. Let them all know. Put up, shut up, and stand up. If you want shirts, you go to teespring.com and buy some merchandise, some put up, shut up, and stand up merchandise right here. Um, and, yeah, and, and just share the show. Like us, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, and we're on Instagram. So, again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, Don. Thank you, everybody. Peace, y'all. Wait, 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 wait. You know it's not over yet. We got one more thing. Check it out. Ciao, my friends. It's me, Alfredo Gagutz, and I love you. How you doing? How you doing? I hope you're doing okay in this quarantine. All right, I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you I'm not in my kitchen because I'm a, into this storeroom and I'm a hiding my salami. And you want to know, Alfredo, where's your salami? You can't find it because I hide my salami. So let me tell you, there was a, these a three brothers. There were three pig brothers. And the one, a pig brother, he built a nicer house, but out of straw. His other brother, he built a nicer house, too, out of sticks and the twigs. But the third brother, he took it to some uh, relative of mine, and they make a nicer house for him out of a brick with a nicer concrete, a nicer mortar brick house, beautiful house. I go there a lot of time, drink a vino with him. I cook uh, the pigs. They like to eat a lot. So one day, there's a big bad wolf. He come to the house, to the straw house, and he's outside, and he's going to, I'm going to eat of these pig brothers. And he huff and a puff, and he blow the straw house into bits. And the brother, he running next door to his brother in the twig house, and he's scared, and the wolf goes in front of that house, and he huff and he puff, and he blow that house into bits, and then the both brothers are scared, and they run inside of the brick house, 
And the brother said, what's the matter? What's the matter? And they said, look out of the window, look. And there was a wolf. And he huffed. He puffed. He tried everything. He can't do nothing to this brick house. And the brother said to his two scared brothers, I take care of everything. You watch. He get on the phone. He make one phone call. He say, look out of the window. A couple of minutes later, the wolf is still huffing a puff. And this big Cadillac pulled up. And too big a pig, too big a heavy, fat a pig wearing a pinstripe suit and a silver machine gone. And they and they kill the wolf. They get back into the car and drive away. And the two brothers say, who were those guys? And the brother said, why? You never heard of the guinea pigs? I don't kid you not. Ciao, my friends.